the key um, new technologies in genetics applying to human beings, of course, are first of all the whole sequencing technology, which is uh, advancing very fast and allowing us to, uh, for instance, select embryos for transfer in IVF procedures. But the most revolutionary one is the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which allows to modify genes to cut out a part of DNA, replace it with another part. And this you can apply to somatic cells in gene therapy, which is maybe less controversial uh, from an ethical point of view. But if you apply it to germ cells like um, sperm and eggs or embryos and then put back the embryo and have a child born, of course that is uh, still very controversial. So the use of these new genetic technologies in, let's say, embryos have of course tremendous medical possibilities because we want to cure uh, diseases and uh, prevent uh, the birth of children with these diseases. But they also come with a lot of ethical challenges and human rights challenges because of many reasons. One of them is that, uh, of course, the embryo cannot give informed consent on its modification. The second the second thing is this, this technology uh, will definitely be very successful and also attractive for commercial uh, purposes. So there will be the patenting and uh, the, the whole issue of access, access to this technology uh, to patients that might need it. Um, of course, there is the philosophical question if we really want to change the human genome and to, to change the human species uh, um, as a whole, which is very frightening uh, to many, many people right now. Um, there is the safety issue. Let's be clear on that. Nobody in the world today would allow on the transfer of a, a modified embryo because of safety issues. We have no idea of the off-target effects, side effects that could occur by using CRISPR-Cas9 in human embryos. Um, the gene functions uh, are not fully known, so some genes may have different functions, and that means that we could have uh, unwanted effects. So there is a lot of uh, human rights and ethical aspects to that technology. Well, the Council of Europe um, could be um, in, an important player, let's say, in regulating this new technology. It has the Oviedo Convention that already sets uh, an international framework which is legally binding in the fields of bioethics. And so the modification of human embryos definitely is banned by the Oviedo Convention. Um, the Council of Europe could ask the Committee of Ministers um, through the report that I'm preparing, for instance, uh, to uh, the member states that did not ratify, because only 29 ratified Oviedo um, to also uh, ratify the Oviedo Convention, and definitely, if they don't want to, um, they should think about um, a framework, an international legal framework, to deal with uh, genome modification of human embryos. For the time being, simply banning it. It should not be allowed. And it needs a lot of public debate. Uh, the uh, Committee on Bioethics, DHBio of the Council of Europe, has an important role to play. And and then the member states, of course, finally need to decide what they will do with this. But the international uh, framework, definitely at the European level, um, can be put in place by the Council of Europe. Oviedo Convention now exists for 20 years and it has been extremely important in uh, regulating uh, the bioethical aspects of uh, human reproduction and genetics. Even if not all the member states ratified, only 29 did, all the other countries have been putting legislation in place to regulate embryo research, for instance, or assisted reproduction and uh, genetics at large. So even if not all countries adhere to it, it can uh, lead to pressure on the other countries and push other countries also to think about and put in place regulation in this domain.